Hi guys, welcome to Cryptids Canada. I hope everybody's having a great weekend so far. I've been stuck in this house going through tons and tons and tons of junk. That's what happens when you live for so long in one place. I'm trying to downsize because in May I am moving out. I've sold the house. It's like exhausting, honestly. I have to get up early because if I sleep in, I feel guilty that I'm sleeping in when I have so much to do, you know, and usually I'm a night hawk, but now it's like you got to get to bed because you got to get up early because you have so much to do. <sighs> Anyways, guys, so I've got an amazing story. I was reading this story and I was just couldn't believe it. I couldn't wait to read it for you guys. Okay, so I'm not going to waste any more time. Put your feet up, guys. Put your head back. Relax. Because I'm about to tell you an amazing story. Sorry about that. I just got excited. <laughs> okay, guys. So, here we go. My dear Leslie, in February 2003, my parents bought a piece of property in Ohio. It was an old farmhouse that had been remodeled and updated, but in a way that looked like a farmhouse from a craft store. But we loved it. The two acres that surrounded the house were pristine green grass and rolling hills, then beautiful forests on all sides of our house. Our driveway was maybe a hundred yards from the road. I'm telling you all these details so that you can imagine it in your mind as I tell the story, so you get an idea of what we went through. Anyways, we got to be friends with the family right across the road. They too had a gorgeous piece of property that they kept immaculate like my parents did. Except they had a couple of acres of farmed fields and then they had woods on the far side of their gardens. The first few years, all of us kids would have a ball playing together. Especially loved the winters. We tobogganed on our property inside the woods and we'd finish on our lawn. There was a nice trail through the woods that wasn't too dangerous. We would walk up the trail, dragging our toboggans and sleds. We had a large track to sled down. The snow was packed down, so we were fairly safe from sledding into a tree. Renee and I, being the oldest, would go down with the youngest. Her and I were 15 at the time. She had a brother and a sister, ages 12 and 6. I also had two brothers, one four and the other eight. We would take the bus home from school, then run inside to a snack, and then into our snowsuits. Then we'd all meet up and decide on the after-school activity, usually tobogganing, although there was a pond just inside the woods on Renee's property that we would ice skate on in the winter and swim in all summer. But a lot of the time, we just played in the snow, making snowmen with the little ones. On this particular day, we decided on tobogganing through the forest. There were all six of us. We had tobogganed all afternoon, and my youngest brother and I were the last to go down, as it was about dinner time. Everyone else was waiting at the end for us. We were sitting on the sled, getting ready to go, and I thought I saw something out of the corner of my eye just to the left inside the woods. There was nothing. So now it was our turn, so we scooched up and we went sailing down the hill. I caught sight again, and I looked to the left again. This time I saw it. It looked like a big, black, furry dog, and it was basically 35 feet over from us, and it was racing down the hill on four legs, like dogs do, until I saw it leap into a running position on two legs. I recall I went, oh, holy F. I couldn't tear my eyes away till I heard Renee scream, veer, veer, meaning to veer away from a tree. I looked up and we were very close to hitting a tree. I veered right and I missed the tree, thank God. I looked over and the black thing was gone, completely which was odd because there was no undergrowth to hide behind. I was bothered by this, but I eventually put it out of my mind until the next day, which was Sunday. Renee's family went to church, and when they got home, they changed and headed over. Now, please understand, my bedroom was on the second floor. 
I was the corner room, so I was blessed because I had a window that looked over the front of the house and another window that looked over the side of the property, which was where we tobogganed at. My desk was positioned at the window overlooking the side of the house, but my parents had built me a beautiful window seat, and I could sit at that while gazing out the front of the house. We were planning on making an igloo with the little kids. So as soon as they pulled in, the kids wasted no time getting changed and into their snowsuits. We were at it for about an hour or so when Jack, Renee's dad, walked over to my house. I assumed he was coming to talk to my dad, as he often did. Shortly after, they wandered around to the side to check out our igloo, or so I thought. They stood there watching us, and periodically they would scan the woods. Then I clearly heard Jack say, Okay, well, maybe I was mistaken, and off they went. We were nearly done when the youngest was starting to complain that he was too cold, and I was actually a little cold myself, so I suggested we call it a day, and no sooner did the words come out of my mouth when I caught a flash of black moving swiftly from tree to tree. Okay, guys, let's, uh, let's go. It's too cold out here, I said. This time, I couldn't deny that there was something in the woods. I became obsessed with what the heck was chasing the sled and staring at us from the woods. I would stare out my side window constantly. Homework that took me an hour now became an all-night affair. I stopped hanging out with my family after dinner. I would stare out all the windows, scanning the woods. Finally, both of my parents came to my room and explained that they were very worried about me. I didn't go out to play with my friends and siblings anymore. All I did was look out windows. I went to argue and deny when my dad reached past me and picked up his hunting binoculars that he kept stored with his outdoor equipment. That was it. The gig was up. They knew it was serious as I had dug through my dad's private items without asking. Finally, I told them that I thought I had saw something in the woods on those two occasions. They asked for details, and that's when I saw the look on Dad's face. He grabbed my mom's hand and told me that I was probably just imagining something. Then they walked out. My room shares a wall with theirs, and I heard Dad tell Mom that Jack came over a few months earlier when we were making our snow fort. Dad said that Jack was watching us, and he too saw something in the woods. Jack had come over and showed my dad he was packing a firearm. So Dad and Jack came out to check on us, but there was nothing there. Mom was concerned, and she said she wouldn't let us out until they figured this out. Dad said that was never going to go over. We should just keep our eyes open and that he was going to go over and mention it to Renee's parents. After that, literally nothing happened, until a year and a half later. I never thought about it anymore, until the summer of 2004. Renee's family were away on summer holidays. They had been gone nearly two weeks, and I was going out of my mind with boredom. I was excited that they were finally coming home that day. So I was sitting at my front window sketching my brothers who were playing on the front lawn in the sprinkler. When I glanced up and I looked over at Renee's house, that's when I saw it. Jack made a wooden box to contain their garbage bins in because the critters were always getting into our garbage. The box was about six foot square, six foot high, six foot wide, and so on. All you had to do was unhook the latch and plop the garbage into one of the bins that were inside. I saw a man looking over the top of the wooden box, staring at my brothers. I ran into my dad's closet and took his binoculars and ran back to my room. I could see it clearly as day. Its hands were on either side of its face and its fingernails were black. Its face was covered in hair but not completely. He had a very pronounced brow ridge and a conical head. 
He also had a very deep ridge on either side of his head. I have a very good eye for detail as I'm a sketch artist. I yelled down to my dad to come here quick, which was stupid because my window was open. I saw it look straight up at me, and then it stood up, straight up. His chest could be clearly seen over the top of the box. My dad flew up the stairs because the tone of my voice. He was able to see the Bigfoot run into the woods. It only took my dad about 30 seconds to get to my room. He was passing the stairs when he heard me yell out and ran right up. The creature made it through an acre lot full of vegetables in that short amount of time. My father screamed for my brothers to get inside, and he and I went and got his pistol and his rifle. My mom wasn't home, thank God. So me and my dad walked over to Renee's house, and as we walked around the box, there were clear footprints. You could see it had been there a while. It had sat down as well and ate carrots and tomatoes out of the garden while it slid its feet back and forth. As we were looking at the prints, Renee and her family had pulled up from their holiday. Boy, did that ever look bad, laugh out loud. Anyway, Jack and Lily came over and the kids were sent to unload the car. We explained everything to them and Jack said, See, I told you I saw something. We walked through the field, and his prints were all over. We could see where he ran through the woods, and the limbs were broken and leaves were all over the ground. The limbs were broken nine feet up. After that, we saw him staring from the woods once in a while. He was never aggressive. It is my opinion that he was a juvenile the winter he raced us down the hill. He probably heard us kids being kids and he was interested. Then something scared him away or he was better at hiding. Regardless, my dad has seen him in the years now since mom passed away. and Dad remarried years later. They asked me to keep their location private for obvious reasons. We are all fans of your channel. And yes, we too love your voice, laugh out loud. Dad's wife is jealous of how sexy you sound. <laughs> As Dad comments every other night, laugh out loud, laugh out loud, laugh out loud. That's the best part. And yes, you can read this. Much love. You know, you guys, I get such a kick out of that. I really, really do. I can't imagine why people think I have a nice voice. It makes me cringe when I listen to it, believe me. But I do thank you. It's a very nice compliment. So, that story. Can you guys imagine? Can you imagine looking out your bedroom window and having such a clear view that you can describe everything about it. Uh, I can't imagine. But I find that uh, we're getting so many stories lately about uh, Bigfoot just watching. Um, I've been hearing them for years and years and years, but um, it really does seem like we have become their main source of entertainment. Uh, there's lots and lots of uh, researchers that can attest to that. So anyways, uh, I enjoyed the story and I think it was very, very well written. And I thank you for taking the time to send it in to us. And you tell your stepmother she's got nothing to worry about. Okay, guys, I think that's going to be it for tonight. I'm so sorry again for how late it is. You know, I actually do set out to have it up by dinner time. I swear. Anyways, guys, I hope you enjoyed your evening with me. And I hope to see you back here in a couple of days. Bye for now.